Hello, it's Paul. Uh, just a quick video about uh, some questions I've been sent by Bristol South Voice. It's a publication, I think, that goes out to um, homes in the Bristol South area. And they sent me six questions. Um, this is kind of following up to the Totterdown hustings, which is going to be happening tomorrow evening in Totterdown. So, I've been sent these questions. The first one is, how would you... And they've asked me to provide, provide an answer in, um, in a paragraph, basically keep it simple and straightforward. Okay, so the first question is, how would you provide a return on investment on your wage as mayor, which is £65,738, the same as an MP, what would you do that the council shouldn't already be doing? So I've said, firstly, if made mayor, I'd take a pay cut and donate part of my salary to a homeless and housing fund to help some of Bristol's most poorest people. I'm interested in devolving decision making to grassroots level. Bristol is a prosperous city. I want to make sure that prosperity is shared amongst all of the city, not just pockets. Number two, how will you ensure that your how will you ensure that the long hoped for arena is an asset to the city without becoming a transport nightmare for Bristolians? So I've said, long hoped for in inverted commas question mark. That depends on who you ask. I'm not in favour of an arena at all, especially in its current location. Lots of people I speak to about the arena tell me that, it, that this will be of great detriment to the lives of Bristolians living in the area and in Bristol more generally. Personally, I'd have the arena project scrapped and have the arena moved on to the outskirts of Bristol rather than having it right in the centre. The arena is a terrible decision for Bristol, in my opinion. Number three. What are, your, what are you planning to do about public transport in Bristol? So I said, aha, transport, the bugbear of Bristolian life. Firstly, first, have had a stranglehold on our transport system for far too long. Let's bring the transport network back into public ownership for the good of Bristolians, owned by the city, for the city, not for rich shareholders in first. Number four, would you reverse part or all of the resident parking schemes? Will you exempt community nurses and other carers from the £198 annual charge that they now have to pay to visit patients who live in RPS areas? So I said, at the stage we are at now, we as a city owe £10 million, and in brackets I put, thanks Bristol Council for taking such a large debt on our behalf. My pr proposition is that once the debt is paid off, that's considering RPZ made £1.2 million profit last year, that residents then get to park their cars for free. The RPZ should never have been used as a cash cow for the council. Yes, carers should be exempt and blue badge holders should be able to park freely throughout the city too. In terms of future RPZ schemes, scams, I would halt all further rollout. Number five. Are you happy that the Bristol Green Capital money was spent with the interest of all Bristolians at the fore? And then the editor's note says, Most of the budget for Green Capital 2015 was devolved by the council to an arm's length private company, Bristol 2015 Limited. The government con contributed £7 million and the council £1 million. So far, detailed accounts of how the money was spent have not been provided. So I've written, Bristol Green Capital... What a load of greenwash. As a keen environmental activist for nearly 10 years, I was saddened by Bristol Green Capital Year, a great opportunity squandered by the powers that be at the council. What is now rubbing salt into the wounds of many Bristolians is now the highly secretive accounts which they won't release. I support the call of opening the books and revealing line by line of how our cash was spent. If made, by, if made mayor, I promise to... I promise to reveal the entire accounts and more generally speaking promote a much more open and transparent and honest Bristol City Council for all. The council work for us and should be reminded of this. Bristol deserves better. The final question which is number six. What will you do to improve the quality of Bristol's air? In many places, pollution exceeds WHO safety limits for nitrogen oxide, which is estimated to cause an extra 200 deaths in the city every year, and is thought to be particularly, dra particularly damaging to children. So my answer is, provide Bristolians with a public transport infrastructure that is easy to use, cheap and is reliable. Only with carrot before stick can this be achieved. 
Also, if made mayor, I will produce an in-depth investigation into just what is going on down in Avonmouth. With widespread allegations of pollution down there, re the port and others, this is something that seems to be off the radar in Bristol, but has massive detrimental effect on the lives of Bristolians and the quality of life that some receive thanks to some operators. There we go. More transparency for you. Cheers, mate.